The Nephilim were a race of giants which once encompassed the entire earth. Today we know quite a bit about them. Archaeology has revealed the artifacts they have left behind. Their history is corroborated by the legends of virtually every culture of the world, including ancient literature, such as the Epic of Gilgamesh, the Book of Enosh, and the Bible. The Inuit Eskimo tribe knew them as the Tuniat. That very same tribe of giants was known to the Norse as the Skraling. Many people of Western Asia and throughout Europe knew them as the Scythians, who had at one point bested Rome in battle and were said to have been so tall that their feet came close to the ground when sitting on a horse. The ancient Hebrews knew them as Amorites and Canaanites. Sumer is the oldest culture of the world, and the Sumerians give us a tremendous insight into the origin of the giants. The Sumerians recorded that the Anunnaki a race of celestial beings, the children of Anak and Anu, came to the earth and fathered a race of men, who then became the kings of mortal men. But the Book of Enosh gives us even greater insight to the origin of these giants. Enosh recorded that during the life of Jared, sometime between 3550 and 2550 BC, the sons of God came to the earth from heaven. Since we know Satan is the father of all lies, it is likely that Satan himself influenced them to do the deeds they did. He had puffed them up and built their pride, and for this crime of pride against the Lord, they were cast out of the heavenly realm. Angered for being cast out of their heavenly home and jealous of the beautiful new creation of God, they consorted to do ungodly things and swore an oath to each other that each would be equally culpable for the sinful things they were about to do. Their point of entry into the world was Mount Hermon, Israel, upon which they landed. Just as humans have special gifts and abilities and each is unique, so too the angels were unique, and each used their own special gifts for defiling mankind. So each taught mankind the arts which they themselves loved most. They took wives of human women whom they called beautiful and fathered the race of giants we know as the Nephilim. Azazel was a lover of metals and taught men to make swords and knives and shields and breastplates and made them known to the metals of the earth and the art of working them and bracelets and ornaments and the use of antimony and the beauty of the eyelids and all manner of costly stones and the coloring of tinctures. Samyaza taught the art of enchantments and root cuttings and all manner of sexual seduction. Amaros taught the art of sexual lust. Barakijal taught astrology. Kokabel taught the constellations. Ezequiel taught the knowledge of the clouds. Arachiel taught the signs of the earth. Shamsiel taught the signs of the sun. And Sariel taught the course of the moon. Not only did the angels sin against man, but they sinned against animals as well. It is believed this means that they genetically engineered new kinds of creatures by mixing the genes of different kinds to create the mythological creatures of old. The corruption the angels had wrought upon the earth was so great that God decided to destroy both man and beast. So God commanded Noah, a man who was righteous and whose genes had not been affected by the work of the angels, to build an ark with which he would save the animals and mankind. But this was only half the story. The angels came and did their dirty deeds again and created a second race of giants that filled the earth. This image depicts a Babylonian king so large that he holds a lion in his arms like a man might hold a house cat. He also has six fingers and toes 
which was common to some of the tribes of giants born after the flood, and is the result of a duplicate gene, an error, if you will, in the genetic tinkering of the Nephilim. There are a great many artifacts left behind by the Nephilim, including footprints which have been found in several places around the world. Skeletons of humans exceeding 16 feet in height have been found in Native American burial mounds and other places around the world. King Og of the Bible had a bed which was iron and 16 feet in length. This is a bed for a man that is 12 to 14 feet tall. The Nephilim vary greatly in size. Many Native American legends tell of men which were 25 to 35 feet tall and capable of throwing a bison over their shoulder and walking off with it. Most of these artifacts have been swept up by the National Geographic Society and most notably by the Smithsonian Institute in an effort to hide the legitimacy of the Bible from the world. The angels cast out of heaven brought a technological explosion to the world. And likewise, their children, the Nephilim, also brought a technological explosion around the world after the Noachian flood. All within a couple of hundred years, great civilizations arose everywhere around the world. The Egyptians, the Chinese, the Sumerians, the Babylonians, the Mesopotamians, the Native American cultures all arose approximately the same time. This explosion of knowledge was due to the Nephilim, who acquired this great knowledge from their forefathers, the angels cast from heaven. And at that time, the Nephilim created monumental statues and buildings all around the world as well, carving stones weighing up to 3,000 tons with mathematical precision. Stones so heavy and large we are incapable of moving them with modern equipment to this very day. Many like to believe that the giant statuary all around the world and all of the cultures of the world is merely an exaggeration of the kingship. This is false, however. They are actual depictions of the true sizes of men. Native American statues, for example, often depict the angels which were cast from heaven. The same is true in Babylonia, Sumeria, Egypt, and other cultures. This modern example of a Native American totem pole depicts an angel cast from heaven, fathering an Nephilim child. This chart shows us the great size of ancient giants. At the far left we see a normal man of six feet height, and at the far right a man of thirty-six feet in height. It also shows us how common the various giants were in their height. For example, it was most common for a giant to be approximately 15 to 16 feet tall. The next most common was approximately 8.5 feet, and so on to 36 feet. There is becoming a general consensus amongst historians that the most common tribe of giants in the world were the Kurgan. This statue in Russia depicts a Kurgan warrior approximately 25 feet tall. The Kurgan were the largest tribe of giants in the world. They originated in southern Russia and encompassed the entire world. The Kurgan had been genetically traced around the world with haplogroup X1 and haplogroup X2 genes. During World War II, the Nazis attempted to recreate the Kurgan by genetic engineering. There were giants in the earth in those days and after that as these Danish axe heads clearly demonstrate, for it would take a man at least 15 to 20 feet tall to swing an axe with a head that weighs between 150 and 200 pounds. The Nephilim were a race of giants which once encompassed the entire earth. Today we know quite a bit about them. Archaeology has revealed the artifacts they have left behind. 
Their history is corroborated by the legends of virtually every culture of the world, including ancient literature, such as the Epic of Gilgamesh, the Book of Enosh, and the Bible. The Inuit...